Today I'm doing a refutation on the claim that offshore drilling should be stopped. He supported his claim with these three points. Offshore oil rigs pose danger to the surrounding environment, offshore drilling is very risky, and offshore drilling is not efficient. He supports his first claim that offshore drilling poses danger to the surrounding environment by stating that marine life is severely affected by the pollutants that are moving into the ocean from the rigs. Although, through my research, the International Debate Education Association says that the environment can benefit from offshore drilling. The offshore oil rigs are massive structures in the ocean that attract a wide variety of marine life. The rig acts as an artificial reef that helps fish, birds, and other sea creatures make it their home. Trevor's second point is that offshore drilling is very risky. This was proven by a statistic from Carl D. Lenin that 1,290 accidents on rigs and platforms were reported from 2006 to 2009, as long as also with 30 deaths. This is not sufficient information due to the fact that it reports accidents up until 2009. This obtains information from four years ago, and since 2010, there has been no major accidents or catastrophes recorded. According to the journal Centennial, this is due to the fact that improvements have been made to technology and are being made to technology in order to lower the rate of oil spills and the risk of environmental hazards. There has been a lower occurrence of oil spills in the last four decades and that technologies are being developed in order for oil drilling to be done without damaging the environment and or disturbing the plant and animal habitats. Drilling will also decrease U.S. dependency on foreign oil and will make America safer. America imports 22% of oil from the Middle East, 22% from Africa, and 19% from Latin America. According to an article titled, Offshore Oil Drilling Might Make Environmental Sense. It is estimated that the oil and offshore reserves could supply U.S. energy needs for two years. According to the Washington Post, the reasons we must lower our oil income from other countries is because countries from which we import oil have lower environmental standards than the U.S. and shipping oil in the U.S. requires burning a huge amount of diesel oil, which is greenhouse gas pumped into the atmosphere. The International Debate Education Association reports that more oil is spilled into the ocean through transporting oil than if you were drilling it yourself. Offshore oil industry spills a surprisingly small amount of oil and that the number and size of spills has declined sharply. This comes to prove that digging your own oil is more productive than importing it from elsewhere. The third and final point that was offshore drilling is not efficient. He states in his speech that it won't lower gas prices for a long time and not by much. This is a false statement because the Washington Post says that gas prices will and are getting lower due to offshore oil rigs. Maybe there won't be a significant change, but in the economy today, any lowered amount is appreciated. According to the International Debate Association, oil drilling is efficient in the way that it creates hundreds of jobs for American workers. They state that drilling itself and development of land after the process will help in engaging people, thus creating jobs for hundreds of citizens. Also not mentioned as a point of efficiency is that offshore is that the offshore drilling industry creates not only jobs, but tax revenue. And since oil drilling can be executed without jeopardizing the environment, then it is a viable option for investment and should be pursued. I hope you now see how offshore drilling can be a beneficial aspect of both our environment and economy. All right, structurally everything is easy to follow. Um, on the first point uh, where you talk about uh, potential um, environmental damage, uh, your response is a counterclaim that says that there might in fact be some advantage to having offshore drilling. Um, 
I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start here because I heard three or four times the citation for the International Debate Education Association, that sort of thing. That's an aggregate site that collects ideas for arguments. It's not really a research site, and so you want to be careful about using information from a site like that. They're giving you talking points as opposed to evidence to support those points. Uh, a lot of it is theoretical in nature, and the, the organization itself doesn't have particular credibility in this field. So, it, Gesundheit, it's kind of like if you were quoting people who were debating in class and used their quotes as a way of proving your point. So it's not the best way to get the evidence. However, they have interesting ideas. There's nothing wrong with going to a place like that to look for information. So for instance, this idea that uh, these offshore drilling sites create artificial reefs and produce some particular <coughs> benefit, that's an interesting idea. Now what proof is there of that? That's what you need to follow up and find some evidence that suggests that that's the case. Um, you know, you sidestep that issue about whether or not it's harmful to the immediate environment with that kind of argument. The, the bigger issue are the spills, and you address this issue in kind of an interesting way. It's both the spills and the accidents, because they have the two things together in this argument about it being risky. Uh, you mentioned that they had 1,290 accidents between 2006 and uh, uh, 2009. So that's three years. You know, not to do too much math, you know, that's about 400 accidents a year. How many drilling rigs are there out there? how many thousands of people are employed in this industry. I'm not saying it's a good thing that 30 people died over the course of three years, but 10 people dying a year in some industries is you know, not that big a deal. I mean, I, I'm sorry, you know, their families, it's a horrifying thing, but there are plenty of coal miners, firefighters, law enforcement agencies, uh, lumberjacks, and uh, construction workers, and all kinds of other people that die on the job sites, and nobody's squawking about, oh, this is a high, you know, the high risk job that we should ban. We should ban construction because people die on construction sites. Nobody is suggesting such a thing, but that's exactly what the advocate was doing in this situation. I think that's the way you want to contrast that argument. There. Now, in the oil spills, I thought that you did have a couple of good responses here talking about improvements in technology, having the lower number of oil spills. Um, none of your argument, though, addresses any of the examples or research that the advocate presented on those points, and you might want to not ignore those points, because uh, if, we, if, we were, if we're hearing the two speeches back to back, it would be very easy for us to contrast and say, okay, well, they cited a study that said, you know, we had 10 million acres uh, destroyed by an oil spill, 50,000 fish died. Uh, 200 species uh, are on the brink of extinction, and your response is, well, technology is getting better. I'm going, well, you know, that's, that's, it's good that technology is getting better, but their argument is that it's risky, and we've got a pretty good argument here on that. If you didn't say anything about those things, I think that would be problematic. Now, there, there might be ways, for instance, to show that most of those risks are not long-term, for example. Uh, I don't think you want to quote the commercials, but Jiminy Cricket's BP has been running commercials ever since the oil spill down in the Gulf, talking about how everything's good again and come on down to the Gulf and, you know, industry's back and there's a great, you, know, you can go do all this kind of stuff. So there's probably some information that suggests that recovery times are pretty quick when there is an accident. Nobody wants an accident, but they're good, quick recovery times. So I think you could develop a little bit more on that. And the efficiency issue, you know, comes back to some of this employment issue. This would be, these would be the kinds of arguments that you'd present as disadvantaged arguments in a policy claim, which, by the way, is what their claim was. And so there are a whole bunch of things. If we were to stop offshore drilling, what would the negative consequences be? Increased dependence on foreign oil, where the environmental regulations are even less stringent, so it would probably be more environmentally harmful, and it would put us at risk uh, strategically and militarily because we'd be dependent on oil sources that were not our own, that kind of thing. All right. Thank you.